Imagine you're Barry Allen, an ordinary forensic scientist, until a bolt of lightning strikes your lab, mixes with chemicals, and suddenly you become the fastest man alive. Sounds simple, right? But in the real world, that same lightning would probably turn you into a walking charred mess before granting any superpower. Still, the idea of running at absurd speeds is fascinating. What if we dove headfirst into the science and fiction behind the Flash's powers? Get ready. We're going to explore how physics would respond to the Scarlet Speedster's insane feats. Barry Allen, the most famous Flash, first appeared in Showcase No. 4 from 1956. In the story, he's a forensic scientist who gains super speed after being doused in chemicals at the exact moment a bolt of lightning strikes his lab. With that, he gains access to something called the Speed Force. This mysterious energy supposedly solves all the practical issues that ordinary science just can't explain. From then on, Barry paves the way for impressive feats. He passes through walls in The Flash No. 177, travels through time in The Flash No. 150, and even explores different realities in the multiverse in The Flash No. 123. But of course, looking at the real world, we have to face the inevitable question. How do these achievements hold up in light of the known laws of physics? When these physical laws are applied to someone running at the speed of light, around 186,000 miles per second, things get complicated. According to Einstein's theory of relativity, as an object approaches that speed, the energy required to keep accelerating grows enormously. In the Flash's case, each step would release so much energy it could devastate entire city blocks, maybe even whole cities, even at a more modest speed. Like the speed of sound, about 761 miles per hour, things would still get ugly. Air friction would generate extreme heat, enough to set our hero on fire, as if he were re-entering Earth's atmosphere. Moreover, the shock wave from such a supersonic sprint could topple buildings, causing a problem of mass destruction that no insurance would ever cover. On top of that, physicist James Kekelios, known for analyzing superheroes in comics, has suggested that the acceleration forces would crush the speedster's body. Bones would turn to dust, organs would liquefy, and without the oft-mentioned speed force from the comics, Barry Allen wouldn't make it past the first corner. If by some miracle or comic book logic, the Flash survived this hellish run, another question arises. Where does he get all that energy? After all, running at extreme speeds requires an enormous caloric intake. In The Flash No. 91, Wally West, another speedster, mentions an insatiable appetite. By extension, Barry Allen likely needs millions of calories a day. For an average human, 2,000 daily calories are usually enough. For The Flash, however, some estimates balloon to tens of thousands or even millions of calories. This means gobbling down many times your body weight in food every single day. Imagine devouring tons of food, equivalent to eating an elephant, maybe two, just to take a few laps around the city. And it doesn't stop there. The time spent eating alone would be surreal. Even at flash speed, the logistics of acquiring that much food would be impossible in real life. And the hero's wallet? It would likely go bust before the day was over. A true financial, energetic, and logistical nightmare. Moving from the stomach to the brain, let's now consider the speed of thought. To run without slamming into walls or mowing down pedestrians, the Flash would need to process information at an almost unimaginable pace. Our average reaction time is around 250 milliseconds, but he'd have to operate in micro or nanoseconds, analyzing every detail of the environment around him. In the comics, such as The Flash, Rebirth, it's clear the speedster sees the world practically in slow motion, perceiving everything as if paused frame by frame. In reality, that would require a supercomputer-like brain, one that not only handles a colossal flow of data, but also cools itself so it doesn't fry. Remember that even the most advanced machines need cooling systems. A human brain in that situation would quickly shut down. Furthermore, reflexes at that level involve abrupt changes in acceleration, massive g-forces acting on the body and especially the brain. Without some kind of healing factor or extra protection, again courtesy of the speed force in the comics, 
Barry Allen would suffer severe neurological damage every time he made a sharp turn or suddenly decelerated. After this scientific sprint, it's clear that despite all the comic book magic, reality is far less kind to heroes who defy the laws of physics. Being the Flash would mean dealing with nuclear-level explosions at every step, facing an impossible appetite to satisfy, and risking overheating your brain with all that data processing. But as Einstein once said, imagination is more important than knowledge. So what do you think? Do you think you could be the Flash?